the wettest, driest radioactivist place on Earth? Did you know where these places are? Or where lightning strikes most? Perhaps the most active volcanoes? Uh, these are a lot of questions that I happen to have an answer for, so for the second time I will explore with you the most extreme places on Earth. If you feel like a category is missing, check out the first video, I might have already mentioned it. Before we set off, you will need a couple things. You will need a valid passport since we'll be crossing a lot of borders, something for taking notes for the exam, and lastly, you need to be very good looking, but it seems you've already got that covered. Let's start with the wettest place on Earth, and I mean by average rainfall. It's not a straightforward category because the place with the most rainfall actually changes a lot. Precipitation can vary and change a lot, and so certain places may fluctuate in and out of the top five. So you should take what I'm about to say with a tiny pinch of salt. With that said, the fifth rainiest place in the world can be found in the Gulf of Guinea. This is San Antonio de Ureca on the island of Bioko. It's, as you would expect, a jungle. It has an average annual rainfall of about 10,450 millimeters. Uh, that's how we're measuring, by the way, millimeters per year. This place might be in a jungle, but the next entry isn't, because the fourth wettest place can be found, surprisingly, in New Zealand at the Crop River. Third place can be found here at Tutanendo, Colombia. Such a hot and humid place creates incredible biodiversity. This is also the case for the second and first place, which can be found close to each other in India. Second place is Cherapunji, and the winner is Mavsinram. I believe is how you say it, with an average rainfall of almost 12 meters. This region gets so much rain because the moisture from the Bay of Bengal is forced upward by the steep Kasi hills, creating near constant monsoon clouds that dump enormous amounts of rainfall. If we zoom out a bit and take our eye from specific places to country averages, in that case the country with the highest average annual rainfall is Colombia at 3240 millimeters per year. Now that I've wet your appetite, let's check out the exact opposite of all this precipitation, which would be the driest places on Earth. Often listed as the driest place on Earth caused by a two-sided rain shadow is the Atacama Desert, with an average of 50 millimeters of rainfall per year, but some spots of the desert haven't seen rain in years. To put it in perspective, it would take 791 years for as much rain to fall in the Atacama as it does at Mavsinram in just one year. The place is so dry, desolate and devoid of life that they even test Mars rovers here. Another contender for the driest place on Earth is the McMurdo Dry Valley. Estimates vary, but annual precipitation is effectively close to zero, often listed as less than 50 millimeters of water equivalent. These valleys are kept dry by powerful catabatic winds, dense, extremely cold air flowing down from the Antarctic Plateau. These winds strip away snow, increase sublimation and stop moisture from ever accumulating. We've been to five different countries already, and Antarctica, so now let's go to the next country, on a continent we haven't been to yet, so put on your plate carrier because we're heading to the front lines in Ukraine. This is Chernobyl, very radioactive, now let's get close and measure how much Becquerel and- Huh? What? Chernobyl is the most radioactive place on Earth, you already knew that? I could have just confirmed what you already knew, and I didn't need to bring you here. Well, but- is it the most radioactive place? There are other places that equal Chernobyl in its radioactivity, and some may even exceed it. Another big one you probably know of is Fukushima. Look, this is me walking around the abandoned towns there, but again, everyone knows these, and they are not necessarily the most radioactive. It's kind of hard to rank the most radioactive places because it depends on exactly where you are standing, if you're standing out in the forest or licking the elephant's foot. So here are some more very radioactive places. Lake Karache in Russia can arguably hold the top spot due to it being a dumping ground for radioactive waste. The lake that was once there has since now dried up and so a lot of this waste is just exposed to the air. Another hot spot literally is the Semipatalinsk test site, also known as the Polygon. This place is radioactive due to the Soviet Union having done 456 nuclear tests at this spot. But if you think this is insane, the Yucca Flat in Nevada has seen 739 nuclear tests. If you think humans are to blame for all these top containers, uh, well you're right. But Ramsar, Iran is the place on Earth where you can find the highest known natural background radiation. Keeping with the theme of danger, where do you think you can find the highest concentration of lightning strikes? The answer is Lake Maracaibo in Venezuela, with 233 strikes per square kilometer per year. This phenomenon is known as Catatumbo lightning, and it must be an awe-inspiring sight to behold. Runner-up, by the way, is Kefuka in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, with only 158 strikes per square kilometer per year. 
These powerful thunderstorms are caused by warm human air rising upwards while surrounded by mountains and converging winds. Okay, now that the lightning has charged us, let us do a speed round. Ready? 3, 2, 1, go! Strongest ocean current, that is the Antarctic Circumpolar Current. Hate the ocean, first you can get away from it is the Eurasian Pole of Inaccessibility. Hate land, the first you can get away from it is Point Nemo. A point so remote and removed from marine traffic that if you were to be there, the closest other people to you would likely be astronauts aboard the International Space Station. That's quite a well-known fact though, but here's one less so. You like islands? I sure do. What country has the most islands? Indonesia? No. Philippines? No. Japan? No. The United States? No. It's Sweden, followed by Norway, then Finland. Don't worry, I don't really blame you for thinking Indonesia, but it does only have 17,000 islands. No worries, Indonesia is still extreme in other categories, such as it has the most acidic lake on Earth, the Kawaiian Crater Lake. Most populated city in the world? Difficult question. Looking directly at administrative unit or city proper, it would be Chongqing at 32 million. But in my humble opinion, that is nonsense because it claims an area the size of Austria. This doesn't look like city to me. Fortunately, a new update just dropped a couple days ago. According to the UN, the top three are now Jakarta, Dhaka and Tokyo. What's the most boring place on earth? Big Springs, Nebraska. That concludes the speed round. Now to the well-reasoned and well-explained content that you are used to from me. Such as... Where on earth can we find the most volcanically active places? Actually, what factors would even determine if a volcano is very active? A combination of eruption frequency, duration, or how much material the volcano spits out. All of these, I think, are fair. Using those metrics, some of the top contenders are Mount Sange in Ecuador, Tucono in Indonesia, Stromboli in Italy, Santiago in Guatemala, and Mount Yasur in Vanuatu. Mount Yasur has been erupting for 800 years and is still going strong. What about some volcanoes that have a persistent or near persistent open lava lake? There are six of those at Eta El, Mount Erebus, Mount Kiliao, Mount Maiko and Tofua. And the largest can be found at Mount Nyeragongo. The big scary volcanoes of the world are actually a lot more spread out than you might think. But where can we find the biggest eruption ever? That would be the Toba supervolcano on the island of Sumatra, which erupted about 74,000 years ago. The resulting caldera formed Lake Toba and released about 2,800 square kilometers of material into the air. It deposited an ash layer 15 centimeters thick as far as the westernmost points of India and triggered a volcanic winter that lasted 6 to 10 years. But the eruption of the Toba supervolcano was nowhere near as explosive as the next fact. Are you ready for it? I'll say it, but just don't tell anyone, alright? Here it is. The video is done. And that means it's time for your exam. Yeah, only kidding. I'm only kidding. I don't want to grade anything. Hope you enjoyed this video and let me know if any of the extremes surprised you. Also, if I made any mistakes, I suppose you can also let me know.